Ali's worth of goods to Niger, including electricity, tobacco, and cement. What then can be done to revive the once thriving transborder trade between the two countries, looking at the economic, business, and social benefits for both countries? Tonight on Weekend File, our focus is prospects of growth following the reopening of Nigeria, Niger Republic border. And our correspondents from the neighboring countries, um, states rather, have filed in reports on the present situation. Our guest is Ibrahim Shehu Dendakata, member of the Niger Niger Business Forum. Welcome to Weekend File. I'm Ruth Aguwele. Thank you very much for joining us. First, let's begin with the news. <laughs> The 17 Quranic school pupils kidnapped two weeks ago at Gidam Bakuso village in Gada, local government area of Sokoto State, have regained freedom. Garrison Commander 8th Division, Nigerian Army, Sokoto, Brigade and General Alexandra Tawasimi, represented or presented the rescued pupils and a lady to Governor Ahmed Aliyu at the State House in Sokoto. Let's hear the details now from Zainab Saidu Abdul Nasser. The pupils of a Quranic school popularly known as Sangaya were kidnapped in the early hours of Saturday, the 8th of this month, when a group of bandits stormed the remote village of Gideon Bakuso of East A district in Gada local government area. Their rescue was as a result of a joint security effort with the help of some good Samaritans. The pupils were abducted just hours before the inauguration of the Sokoto State Community Guards Corps, a civilian volunteer force trained to assess the existing security outfits to fight the rampant attacks and kidnappings for ransom in Sokoto State. Our readiness to ensure protection of their lives and the property. Indeed, we have already started taking measures towards achieving this. We also call on uh, our good people to continue to cooperate with us and give us timely information so that when issues like this happen, we nip them at the bottom. One of the rescued peoples narrated their ordeal and thanked the security forces and the government of Sokoto State. In Sokoto, Zainab Said Abdul Nasser, NTA News. Minister of Information and National Orientation Mohamed Idris has restated President Bola Tinubu's leadership passion to ensure equal opportunities to all Nigerians, particularly in infrastructural development. This was during one of his, um, the minister's chat with Nigerians at the Rigasa train station in Kaduna. Sali Huguanara reports. The train? No, sir. Yes, you have, you have taken this uh, severally? Yes. You don't sir. feel afraid? Like the reporter he said he is, reporting for duty, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, in one of such duties at the Rigasa train station in Kaduna. He led the presidential media team for an official engagement in the Northwest and got attracted with the activities at the train station and decided to engage some of his fellow passengers. Regular, yeah, regular passengers. Yes, sir, yes, sir. How do you feel taking this train? Very, very, very fantastic. You feel happy about what Very, happening? very happy, yes. Following up is very key. And like what you're doing, I believe, is part of your follow-up to get to know what's happening. These experiences, the minister reiterated, will be sustained by the government through infrastructural rebirth in the nation's transportation sector. Everybody appears to be happy, uh, comfortable and confident that uh, security uh, has been provided by the security services to ensure that uh, all those who are taking this train um, uh, feel confident and arrive in safety. Uh, I know that the government is concerned about uh, how people feel, especially uh, in view of what has happened in the past. But now everyone appears to be very, very confident. Uh, you can see how people are trooping in. The government has uh, invested heavily in this sector. It will continue to do so. Uh, the hope is that at the end of the day, every part of this country uh, will be covered by train service. The free train services provided by the federal government during the last Yulitai season to cushion the effect of fuel subsidy removal is still fresh in the minds of many who spoke with the minister and are still looking forward for a similar gesture. From Rigasa train station in Kaduna, Salio Guanara, NTA News. 
In another development, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohamed Idris, has reminded traders that sharp practices are unhealthy to the ongoing efforts of rebuilding the economy of Nigeria. This was when the federal government media team, which he led on a tour to Kanu and Jigawa, engaged members of the Kanu state business community in Kanu. Let's hear once again from Salihu Gwanara. The media team acknowledged the concerns and collaboration the administration of President Bola Tinubu is enjoying from the citizens, describing it as a challenge to remain focused while delivering good governance through its rewarding economic policies. To boost industrialization, the federal government has also issued import duty exemption certificate letters, letters of recommendation to 20 manufacturers to boost expansion and production capacity. Now, of course, business intervention in the business sector. Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investments has commenced processes for the distribution of 200 billion naira that is already approved by the President through the three new special intervention funds established as part of measures to bring post subsidy removal uh, relief to businesses in this country. In this direction, like I said earlier, Bank of Industry has announced the commencement of disbursement of the 50 billion naira presidential conditional grant scheme for traders, food vendors, etc. The exchange of quality ideas here has rekindled the hope of participants. We commended his, uh, Mr. President for the courage he has in removing the subsidy. We are hoping that the plan on the economy will lead a positive, inshallah. Engaging stakeholders at the grassroots is a mandate of the presidential media team to take governance to the people. In Kano, Saliu Gwanara, NTA News. In a swift response to the urgent need to halt rising cases of traffic infractions caused by use of trailers to convey passengers and the accidents they cause, the FRSC court martial Dauda Aliviu has inaugurated a joint task force to arrest and prosecute offenders involved in such traffic infractions. A statement by the core public education officer Jonas Agu indicates that the joint task force comprises several paramilitary agencies as well as transport unions. The commissioned team has already swung into action, manning the Kaduna Abuja Expressway. The Assistant Court Marshal Federal Operations, Zubeiru Matu, emphasized on the cardinal role of the Joint Task Force, emphasizing the need to end incessant road crashes on the highways. Having a strong family ties, as it is in Islam, will go a long way in ensuring peace and development in society. Well, this was a submission of Islamic clerics at the 18th Annual Ramadan Lecture of the Nigerian Television Authority, the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and the Voice of Nigeria, held in Kaduna. Let's hear details now from Haruna Mohammed. The convergence of erudite scholars, educationists, including traditional rulers, for the 18th annual Ramadan lecture of NTA, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria in Kaduna. With the team, family dynamic, rights and obligations, the Islamic perspective, renowned scholar, and guest Five speaker minutes. using Quran and Hadith, narrates Islamic jurisdiction, insights, rights, and responsibilities inherent in the family life according to Islamic principles. In several verses of the Quran, it has drawn our attention to the importance of uh, maintaining the family ties. Minister of Information and National Orientation, Mohammed Idris, reiterates the importance of family value and nation building. Families are the cornerstone of our society, embodying our religion, values, tradition, and our heritage. They serve as the nucleus of our communities, nurturing the next generation and promoting bonds that transcend time and circumstance. It is to the knowledge of all of us, especially the Muslim Ummah, that the recent terrains and also happenings in family cycles call for prayers and also for conversation. Questions were asked and answers provided. The success of the event, stakeholders say, underscores the relevance of Islamic teaching in navigating the complexity of family life and reaffirmed the collective resolve 
to foster stronger family bonds grounded in faith and righteousness. In Kaduna, Haruna Mohamed, NTA News. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, wishes to alert the public, especially those who have loved ones abroad, to a new scheme by scammers who impersonate NDLEA of officers and call unsuspecting citizens to inform them of the arrest of their relatives at Nigerian airports for purported drug trafficking. In a statement by the NDLEA spokesperson Femi Baba Femi, he says the fraudsters will call unsuspecting citizens um, while informing them of the arrest of relatives. But Baba Femi advises Nigerians not to fall victims by calling the following numbers displayed on the screen for clarification. Borno State Governor Babagana Umarazulum has unveiled a 90 horsepower capacity solar irrigation pump station in Damasak, in northern part of the state. Mohamed Goni reports that the governor, during his one day engagement in the area, also launched the sale of petrol to farmers at a subsidized rate of 500 naira per liter. The pumping station with a combined 90 horsepower capacity comprises three units of 30 horsepower pumps discharging 225 liters per second with 105 discharging points covering 125 hectares of rice fields. Governor Zilim explained that his administration is shifting focus from continuous food distribution to empowering farming activities in the state. So I want to announce to the general public that for this year's irrigation season, government of our state is to procure 1 million liters of petrol and to distribute it within the entire state at a subsidized rate to the power. Government procured 5,000 water pumps, petrol water pumps, 1,000 solar pumps, and 20,000 bags of fertilizer will be provided. While in Damascus, Governor Zilim distributed the said fertilizers, solar and petroleum powered water pumping machines with accessories and agrochemical for farmers in two local government areas of Mobar and Abadam. He also inspected the expanded Nglai scheme, Zanna Umarti, Dushi, Damascus Central, and all other accessible farms in Damascus in Maiduguri, Mahmoud Gwani, NTA News. Evangel University, Akaze, Eboi State, has been described as a citadel of learning that have contributed immensely in enhancing the quality of tertiary education in Nigeria. This was the view of guests at the second to eighth combined convocation ceremony of the institution held at the Evangel Camp in Ebuin State. Fortunate also reports that the convocation ceremony was also used as an opportunity to honor distinguished individuals, including Ebuin State Governor. University Akeze is a missionary institution established in 2012. The institution, which has remained non-discriminatory in its admission procedures, has not witnessed any interruption in its academic calendar since inception and has admitted students from all states of Nigeria. I extend my heartfelt appreciation to the University Administration for its commendable efforts, the pursuit of academic excellence, and the relentless pursuit of global competitiveness. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Ichie Kalu, disclosed that Evangel University offers over 23 fully accredited courses in four colleges, and its performance in the academic world has continued to increase its ranking. This university, having tossed split from the year 2012 to 2024, has been ranked by international organizations. Latest is the ranking of the Times Higher National of Great Britain, which ranked Evangel University the ninth among all private universities in more than one than The second to eight combined convocation ceremony of the institution witnessed the award of an honorary degree of Doctor of Science on Ebony State Governor Chief Francis Nwifuru and conferment of the post of the Chancellor on the General.